Stand by to rig the barricade. We have just seen how an aircraft in distress is brought safely to rest aboard the deck of an aircraft carrier. The equipment used for emergency arrestment of aircraft is called a barricade. This is the Mark 7 barricade. The Mark 5 barricade is similar in many respects. You will be shown later how they differ. We will see how barricades are constructed, how they are assembled and rigged, and the accessory equipment used in conjunction with them. Most of the film was photographed at dockside and at sea during a cruise involving no actual flight deck operations. The Mark 7 barricade is designed for use with the Mark 7 Mod 1, 2, and 3 arresting engines. It is supplied in two widths, 91 feet and 108 feet, and is 24 feet high. The barricade consists of three webbing assemblies. Each webbing assembly contains five webbing systems. Each system consists of an upper loading strap, a lower loading strap connected to the upper loading strap by links, either five or six engaging straps on sliding D-rings, a connecting strap at each side attached with sliding D-rings, and a sewed-on support loop at each corner. The engaging straps are staggered for equal load distribution. Thus, if one of the loading straps should fail, the effect would be minimized. The five systems, grouped together and held in place by elastic strap clips, form one webbing assembly. The three webbing assemblies are grouped together to form the barricade. These assemblies are held together by elastic strap clips. The barricade is suspended between two stanchions, which are 24 feet high. The upper corners of the barricade are attached by tensioning pendants to the stanchions. The lower corners are connected by tensioning pendants to deck winches mounted near the base of each stanchion. The tensioning pendants are connected to release straps, which are designed to break when the aircraft enters the barricade, releasing the barricade from the stanchions. The release straps are secured to support loops at each corner. Nylon extension loops pass through the connecting straps on each end of the barricade. The extension loops then pass through a ring coupling and are joined together by links. The inboard side of each ring coupling is connected to the parallel pendant, which extends across the deck parallel to the lower loading straps. The outboard side of each coupling is attached to an extension pendant. The extension pendants are coupled to the terminals of the engine purchase cable. The parallel pendant allows pretensioning of the extension pendants and purchase cable without putting strain on the barricade itself. When the aircraft enters the barricade, the release straps break, releasing the barricade. The aircraft is caught by the engaging straps. These transmit the load to the loading straps. The load is then taken by the nylon extension loops. The extension pendants, the purchase cable, and finally by the barricade engine. The engine absorbs the kinetic energy of the aircraft, bringing it to a gradual stop within a predetermined runout distance. The barricade webbing is assembled in the following manner. Starting at the corner of one of the assemblies, attach a release strap to each support loop using a lark's head hitch. When all five release straps have been attached, spread them open and cover them with a zippered canvas boot. 
Do the same at each of the other three corners. When this has been done to all three webbing assemblies, place the assemblies one on top of another. Make sure that the stenciled markings showing port and starboard and top and bottom correspond. Wrap elastic strap clips around the upper and lower loading straps, one on either side of each engaging strap. There are three canvas boot assemblies at each corner. Place them on the latch of the release assembly. Then close the latch and lock it by installing a bolt, nut, and cotter pin. Do the same at each of the other three corners. Each webbing system has a connecting strap on each side attached by sliding D-rings. There are 15 connecting straps on each side of the barricade installation. Pass a nylon extension loop through the first connecting strap and through the large center hole of the ring coupling. Then connect the two ends of the nylon extension loop with a link. Repeat until all 15 connecting straps are fastened to the ring coupling with nylon extension loops. Do the same at the other side of the barricade installation. Then position the parallel pendant between the two ring couplings. Connect the ends of the parallel pendant to the inboard side of the ring coupling. Connect an extension pendant to the outboard side of each coupling. This completes the assembly of the barricade. The barricade is now folded for stowage. Although there is no prescribed procedure, it should always be stowed so that it will be readily accessible when needed. If stowed on deck, the barricade should not interfere with operations and should be covered at all times with a tarpaulin, since sunlight is extremely harmful to the nylon webbing. As the first step in rigging, the pre-assembled barricade is pulled out and positioned between the stanchions. Install the deck ramps while this is being done. Pay out the upper tensioning pendants from the stanchion winches and attach the terminals to the two upper webbing release assemblies. Unwind the lower tensioning pendants from the deck winches and attach the terminals to the lower webbing release assemblies. Tension the upper pendants by using an air motor at the starboard stanchion winch. Tension the lower pendants at the port deck winch. Raise the barricade retractable shivs. Pull out the purchase cable from each shiv and connect them to the two extension pendants. When the air motors tensioning the pendants begin to strain, Raise the stanchions all the way. Tension the entire cable system by pulling the engine retracting lever. Check to make certain the mid-span height of the barricade is 20 to 21 feet above the deck. The barricade engine operator is given the weight of the aircraft to be arrested, and he sets the weight selector accordingly. The barricade is now ready to make the arrestment. The barricade stanchions are raised and lowered hydraulically by a power package. The power package consists of an accumulator, which contains hydraulic fluid and air at an operating pressure of 1,500 pounds per square inch. A fluid storage tank, which stores hydraulic fluid at atmospheric pressure, and a pump which pressurizes the accumulator by pumping fluid into it from the storage tank. The pump is turned on and off by a motor controller, actuated by a pressure switch from the accumulator. To raise the stanchions, 
the barricade control lever is turned to the up position. This permits hydraulic fluid from the accumulator to pass through the control valve and flow through piping to the stanchion cylinders. The hydraulic pressure forces the piston rods through the cylinders, pulling the actuating arms of the stanchions forward. This, together with a pull of counterbalancing springs, raises the stanchions. The fluid forced out of the cylinders returns to the stowage tank. To lower the stanchions, the barricade control lever is turned to the down position. The pressurized fluid then flows through the other line, forcing the pistons in the opposite direction and lowering the stanchions. The fluid forced out of the cylinders returns to the stowage tank. Raising or lowering the stanchions causes the pressure in the accumulator to drop. With a motor controller selector switch set on automatic, the pump will switch on when the pressure drops to 1,250 pounds per square inch. Fluid will then be pumped from the storage tank into the accumulator until the pressure in the accumulator returns to 1,500 pounds per square inch. Before the barricade recovery system can be employed, the power package must be put in ready condition, as indicated on the valve diagram. Check all valves to make sure they are set in the normal positions. Then turn on the power switch. Check the fluid levels in the accumulator and also in the storage tank. If the fluid level in the tank is low, Add more fluid as required. If the fluid level and the pressure in the accumulator are low, engage the pump to raise both fluid and pressure levels. If the fluid level returns to normal and the pressure is still low, turn off the motor controller and the power switch. Then increase the air charge until the accumulator pressure gauge indicates 1,500 pounds per square inch. When the levels are set properly, secure the air charging valves. Turn on the power switch and set the motor controller to automatic. Above deck, Make sure the barricade stanchions are unlocked and free of obstructions. Turn the barricade control lever to the up position. The stanchions will then raise. With the control lever in the up position, vent the entrapped air from the raising ends of both stanchion cylinders. Turn the control lever to the down position to lower the stanchions. Before securing the stanchions, pull on the tensioning pendants to make sure they are snag-free. Lock the stanchions in place. Turn the barricade control lever to the neutral position. Grease the winches with graphite grease and grease the shaft of the base assembly with mineral grease. Close power package valve number one. This completes the post-operational check of the stanchion hydraulic system. The Mark V barricade is used in conjunction with the Mark V Mod 3 arresting engine. The stanchions used with the Mark V barricade are not operated by hydraulic fluid pressure. Instead, they are raised and lowered by air cylinders, which use ship's air at 100 pounds per square inch. The stanchions are 21 feet high. Since this is not sufficient to provide a barricade centerline height of 20 to 21 feet, 24-foot aluminum props are used in conjunction with the stanchions to obtain the necessary height. Note that the Mark V barricade does not employ a parallel pendant. Instead, 
the nylon extension loops pass through a wire rope loop secured to a three-way coupling. The coupling is connected to the barricade engine purchase cable. A deck stop retains the purchase cable when tension is applied. Like the Mark 7, the Mark 5 barricade is 24 feet high, but it is provided only in the 91 foot width and employs two webbing assemblies instead of three. The Mark 7 and Mark 5 barricades are vitally important emergency equipment. Your thorough knowledge of their maintenance, construction, and rigging will help to ensure that they will do the job when an emergency barricade arrestment must be made aboard your ship. <laughs>